he has uh, a website. He published well. He publishes a workbook that's available. He also has uh, free information on the web. He has Ask the Retoucher Live, which is a no charge weekly internet video blog, which he'll tell you about. And he has uh, information on how you can t contact him with any questions that you might have after this session. He has worked with many gene genealogical services and societies, both in Illinois, Ohio, and Indiana. And we're very pleased to have him sharing his expertise with us this morning. He's director of the Genealogical Speakers Guild. A director. A director. A director. Oh, one. a I'm director. One. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking a director of Shoreline. Of Shoreline, too, yeah. I'm okay. a director. There's uh, lots both, of other directors. Uh, both yeah. Groups. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I did, quick question for you. Okay, this is. I'm. I'm mm -hmm. I am. Where am I now? Well, uh, 211.15. Okay, and then that's it, right? This is. Yes. This is it. Yes, but you will be here for questions yeah, yeah, after yeah. the session is over. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. I just I just want to make sure, and I'm kind of, am I doing the same thing I did? Yes, you are. Before. This is a different group. This is a new group. Oh, these are new faces. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. All right. So um yeah. There's a, there's a mailing list. I highly recommend you give me your info on there. I will not sell it or give it away to uh, anyone. I, if you do that, you'll get a monthly update of courses and workshops and other information just once a month. When this workshop is put on the internet, uh, you'll be able to view it. Or I think the last one. I think I'm going to run out of tape for this one. And we will, uh, I'm always available for questions. And the course I have is right here. Uh, we do have it for sale. I know you will enjoy it. Quick survey. How many of you have computers? Raise your hand. Good. I want, there's a water bottle down here. Here's the other question. Does anyone know if this is for me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to drink this here, a little bit. I thought, you know, sometimes people leave their stuff while they're talking to me and I, you know. Okay, thank you. Um, how many of you have scanners? Raise your hand. Ain't nothing wrong with being old. With, there's wisdom with age. Even with your computer hardware. Well, maybe. Okay, uh, how many of you have uh, digital cameras? Great. All right. And Photoshop, do you use something called Photoshop or Photoshop Elements? So, so if you don't use Photoshop to work on your pictures, what do you use? Picasso. Picasso, okay. All right. Well, I suggest, uh, you know, you get, if you don't have it, uh, get something called Photoshop Elements. And it's very inexpensive, less than $100. It's worth it. There's lots of great literature about it. And I think that um, you'll be very satisfied with it. And if you get a good teacher to show you how to ha work with it, uh, you'll be set. Let's talk a little bit about preservation. I call this our um, prevention class. And it's not as... Uh, pretty as you know me working on pictures and showing you how fast I am and how good I am and all that stuff. What I really want is first to make sure you all have good habits. Now um, was anyone here from the you were here with but you were here for the whole not for the whole thing, just the end. You came at the end. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Good. So I'm not really repeating too much for you. I, I, I hate to make people suffer another session of my indoctrination. Um, 
There's two stages here when it comes to your photographs and your prints. And I'm starting mostly with your hard copy prints or documents. Negative slides, uh-oh. And I deal with the, the, uh, the originals and then I deal with the digitizing part. And the digitizing part is comprised generally of scanning it and then maybe working on it. Let's deal with some important vocabulary. You really need to understand this. I think it's, it, it would really be helpful. There's archival quality materials. And if something has archival quality, you're looking at a lifespan of 50 to 100 years. Nothing lasts forever, not even the rocks in the great mountains. It all breaks down eventually. So generally, if you get into the habit of migrating or teaching those who come after you about migrating the information to the next generation of archives, there shouldn't be too much of a problem. It'll last. You have, maybe you have tapes on, on maybe you have LPs, you, gotta, you put them on tape. If you got tapes, now you're putting them on CD, mm -hmm. okay? It, you know, and then, then next is MP3 on your, your digital device. Mm -hmm. There's a term called PVC, polyvinyl chloride. This is found in all of your plastics. It's found in almost everything. It's just all over the planet. <laughs> in the water, in the oil, in the soil, and uh, this, is, this is a very uh, unstable uh, element in plastic that actually attacks your photos and your documents, and it does affect them negatively over a long period of time. Lignin. This is the impure organic matter found in wood. All the, almost all the paper you get that you might use for envelopes that you print on has lignin in it. This is also an unstable element that starts to break down right away and does affect your prints and documents. PVC, lignin, you want to buy products to store your documents and photos that do not have these components. How do you know? Well, it smells a little bit like no. You'll know because it will say PVC free or it will say lignin free. You'll find stores like that, you'll find websites, we'll get to that at the end. There's CDR, compact disc dash R. That's a once recordable disc, very common. You, once, you, once it's recorded, once the data is put on there, it's, it's stuck there and you can't erase it. You can run magnets on it, won't do anything to it. Put it in the sunlight, well, that could do something to it. Get it wet, not going to do anything. CDRW, rewritable. These are the same type of disk. That means you can uh, save to it, erase it, save again, erase, save again. RW is what I call uh, 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 a nice temporary storage, but it is not archival. So you got archives, you're digitizing, CDRW is inappropriate. CD-R is. Now we have DVD-R. Common. These are used for your movies. Some of your movies are actually printed on, on or, or burned to DVD plus R. But generally DVD-R is where you want to go. Very commonly used very standard, very stable. Difference between the DVD and the CD is it stores a whole lot more information. And most of today's computers are able to burn DVD as well as CD. DVD RW is rewritable as well. Not good for archival purposes. Then there's the plus R the uh, plus RW, and then there's the R2, and the R2 means it does it on both sides. The data still does not support 